Before we start, I must warn you guys, this is going to be a long, disjointed episode, but there's going to be a lot of information, and hopefully you guys have a lot of fun watching. I have all three birds out. This is a disaster waiting to happen. Two... Three. Ah. This is where the fun begins. Hey guys, Disembodied Brock here to give a special shout out to our top tier patrons on Patreon and let you know that we have some amazing Toucan merch. This all goes to help the birds and I out exponentially and we cannot thank you enough. If you'd like to help in other ways and enjoy the channel, please make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell. We hope you enjoy, and maybe learn a thing or two about toucans. Alright guys, well it's about that time. Uh, unfortunately we're going to have to do this whole first meeting thing a little bit differently because I'm not sure how she is going to react to the other birds, and we want everything to be safe. So for now I've moved the quarantine enclosure out here into the living space. Um, I'm gonna set up a more permanent, at least sleeping area for her with the other birds in the other room. Um, but before I do that, I wanna see how she's gonna react to the other birds first, because that's gonna determine whether I need to create more barriers between them so they can't interact with each other for the time being. So um, we're gonna start with Maeve since Maeve's already in here investigating. You wanna come here? Okay, I just went and got her because she was kind of nervous, so. Let's just see what happens. Careful. That's what I was afraid of. That was not a very nice snap. Um, well, that kind of changes the whole dynamic that we have here, unfortunately. So um, I'm gonna hold Maeve a little more still here and just see. It's okay, it's okay. What the threshold is. It's okay. Okay, she doesn't want any part of you, Maeve. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we'll let some time pass and see if Maeve continues to stay in this area and investigate and all that kind of thing. And we'll come back to Maeve later, but that's not... And... Beatrix is kind of regurgitating her food a little bit, which tells me she may be a little nervous. Although she seems fairly normal right now. What do you think about her, huh? You want to have a, a new friend? Yeah, she's a little... <laughs> I'm surprised Maeve hasn't flown off yet, actually. Maeve is very interested in her. But we're going to keep a distance, and I don't think Maeve's going to jump onto her enclosure, but if she does, on the top I have a piece of plexiglass that'll separate them. Because that's where she'll jump to. So, you wanna, let's try Tupac now and see what happens. You want to go back in here? Oh. Now, with Tupac, I, I probably don't need to be quite as nervous because he's like three times her size, but um, we're still going to... And his beak is much longer, too, so he has more of a buffer zone if things get out of hand. I just want to see if she'll try to snap at him or not safely. What do you think? He's, he's a little more intimidating, isn't he? Yeah. Oh. Oh, 
She didn't look like she was gonna bite. Maeve's watching back there now. Ooh, oh, careful. Okay, she is gonna snap at either one of them, which is fine. The only, I mean, it's normal for them to snap at each other, but I don't want them to injure each other quite yet because once. Let me put Tupac back somewhere. Well, actually, we can talk with him. Um, when they're in their flock dynamic and they all consider each other family, they will fence with each other, and that's a completely normal thing. But when a bird, when a toucan doesn't consider that bird part of their flock, they're less likely to snap at the beak, which is what they would normally fence with. So, um, like I've noticed with all the toucans that I've had and experienced, if they consider you part of their flock, they will only ever bite at your hands, which can be painful, don't get me wrong, but that's uh, way better than, uh, you know, than snapping at your face or any other part of your body for that matter. So they kind of can, I guess they kind of figure out that you manipulate things with your hands the same way they manipulate things with their beaks, and so that's what they go for. They won't try to bite you in the face and stuff like that. You went back down? Here, we'll put you down here for now. Um, but with a toucan that doesn't consider you part of that dynamic, I mean, there's no barriers. Like, she's already bit my nose and stuff. I have to be way more cautious with her because, um, you know, I don't want her biting Maeve's wing or her foot or something like that and then somebody getting hurt and vice versa because Maeve could start to be defensive as well. So the best course of action would have it an area like this where she can see me interacting with the other birds and the other birds interacting with each other. She hasn't been a part of any social group in her life which is not a good thing for a social animal you know. Being isolated in a cage by yourself would not be good for you. Oh, careful would not be good for you, and it especially wouldn't be good for a bird, or it wouldn't be good for us either, but you know what I'm trying to say. They're social animals, they need a structure, they need to know how the dy dynamic works, and if they've never experienced that, then they can behave unpredictably. So <clears throat> I want her to be able to see the other birds out here and interacting with me and how everything's fine and chill and they play and eat together and all that kind of stuff, and it's not so scary being out of the cage. Hey. Careful. Maeve, you are a little, being a little brave. Don't do that. Here, get back here. Come on. Go over there. Um, so I want them to be able to see each other and kind of interact, but get used to seeing each other without the potential, uh, circumstances that would lead to them hurting each other. So I have an idea of how I'm going to set their enclosures up for now so that they can see each other and even interact to an extent, but not like touch each other. Um, Maeve's enclosure is a double macaw cage. Actually, it's the biggest possible bird cage without it being a walk-in aviary that you can possibly buy. So it came with a divider and I'm thinking for the time being I'm going to put the divider in and not only put the divider in but cover part of the um, the part where they can you know the bars where they can see each other cover that with plexiglass like a thin plexiglass like this where it's flexible enough where they can't she can't potentially hurt Maeve and Maeve can't potentially be hurt either. And then if they, if she jams her beak into it, it's not going to hurt either because it's flexible. So, but it'll keep them at bay for now where they can't interact with each other in that enclosure. And then if we're out here, I will probably leave this, careful Maeve, don't jump up there right now. Okay. Um, I'll probably leave this out here so that she can watch and, um, see everyone interacting together and see them being outside the cage because that might motivate her to want to be outside of it as well. Don't jump up there, okay? Not right now. Oh, hey. Come on. We don't want that. I might have to discourage me from jumping up there too, but 
I don't know. I'm figuring things out as I go, and there's not really any guide or anybody that I could ask on how to do this stuff, unfortunately. I mean, three different species of toucan in one house in an environment that's, you know, in a house environment hasn't really been done. But toucans flock with each other in the wild. They flock with other species of toucans. So we have our, we have their biology on our side. You know, they, they will tolerate and accept other toucans even if they aren't in the same species in their flock so it's a careful name it's only a matter of time for us to figure out what works what doesn't and how we can safely get everybody acclimated to each other and two clocks probably not much about you know worry as compared to Maeve because Maeve's more in line with her size but, um, you know, I, I don't suspect that she'll go anywhere near Tupac because he's too big. And Tupac won't go near her because, you know, he doesn't really go anywhere. And Tupac's generally pretty pacifistic, so. I don't know, guys. We'll just, we're going to have to play it by ear. But first thing we want to do is get her used to the idea of being outside the enclosure and get her friendly with me. And then at least be able to observe the other birds. I don't want to introduce them to each other until I'm, until I have a relationship with her where I can break it up if I need to. Because, like I said, for toucans fighting is normal. That's how they, they play, fight. They, you know, it's like, it's like two kids wrestling. You know, it's like somebody could get hurt, but um, it's all in good fun usually. And that's kind of how they, the toucans determine their hierarchy in their flock. So it's an essential part of their structures but you know we want to get them all used to each other first and know that they're not a threat to each other so we don't have to worry about them being potential prey to one another because they're all toucans thankfully but the toucans are a little racist they don't like to tolerate other non-toucans in their uh areas so but we'll just see what happens and um hopefully that was a little bit informative to you guys i'm sorry it's not all cute and stuff like Maeve and Tupac first meeting because they kind of they kind of hit it off right off the bat but you know we'll see what happens and we'll have to just go from there and that's all we have to do really you know so but um first thing I'm going to do is try to encourage her to come out of this enclosure on her own tomorrow and be out here with just me Maeve probably not Tupac probably just me definitely not Maeve but um I want her to choose to come outside of the enclosure through her own volition without me forcing it on, upon her. So that's the goal. Whether it's to coax her out with food or whatever else, or toys, we'll just see what works. But, um, you know, she won't perch on my arm. She flies in the walls constantly. She bites constantly. It's, um, it's quite the ordeal having her outside of the enclosure. So, but we will figure out what works best for her and um, get her get her some social skills and a little therapy and then she should be good to go. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to support us, please check out Patreon. It helps me be able to do this kind of stuff more and helps keep both me going and the birds, of course, more than anything. Um, check out the merch and what else is there to say? You know, what? Ooh, hey, hey, hey. All right, we're going to have to keep that from happening from now on. Or if you just want to simply support us by subscribing or liking, that's great too. It helps us grow and helps us in turn make more income that we can put towards the birds and things like that for bigger spaces and whatever else comes in our midst. And two bucks, two bucks down here on the floor looking at me. <laughs> He's like, what are you going on about? But that's it guys. We will see you next time. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, what can I say about bye for now? Hey. What do you think about her, Maeve? She's not very nice yet, huh? Ah, uh, hey. Come on. This is what I was afraid of. Um... So I have a backup plan because they're going to actually...
rifle. Hey. All right, May flew off. She's not trying to bite at anything but her bill, at least, which is good. That's one thing I was worried about. But, <clears throat> you know, I have this plexiglass up here, so there's a safe barrier. As long as May doesn't, like, grab the side of the bars here, we should be good. But they're going to need a lot of supervision. And, you know, that goes without saying, so. But May... They can look at each other safely, you know, without um, getting hurt this way. So, I'll probably leave this in here for a while. That way she can watch us and, um, you know, the other birds and she doesn't feel left out or left alone. She can see them being out and everything being okay and then we can kind of go from there. We might, we probably don't need this towel now. I left that there in case I needed to cover the plexiglass up, which I might have to. But the plexiglass, thankfully, is flexible enough where she can jab at it and not hurt herself. So, oh boy. Okay. So, it's a couple days later. I've been working pretty tirelessly the last couple days trying to get this done. Um, but, oh, careful. So I've taken Maeve's enclosure here and I've put the divider in. She didn't want me sticking the phone inside. I'm scaring her. I'm sorry. Um, you can see that I've fastened thin sheets of plexiglass between the divider um, with zip ties and then I've drilled holes so that the purchase can go through to the other side and be secured. So we have a divider here that's, you know, this powder coated iron or steel or whatever it is. And then has a sheet of plexiglass on Beatrix's side. So she can jab at it and all that kind of stuff and not hurt herself and then vice versa, nobody's gonna get hurt. Maybe's not gonna get hurt, she's not gonna get hurt. It's gonna be great. So this is a very large cage. Um, I hate having to split it up for Maeve and her to be able to both be in here, but I want them to be able to interact with each other to some extent without possibly killing each other. But here's what it looks like all when it's all said and done. It's it's very big, you know. It's, uh, what is it, 80 by 40, and then it's, it's pretty, it's almost as tall as I am. Let's see. No, not quite, I'm still like, I'm still like four or five inches taller, but um, it's a big ass cage. It's it's the biggest cage that you can possibly get that's not a walk-in aviary type of situation. So, um, but they should both, since they're smaller here, they should both fit comfortably in here. Um, they're mostly, well Maeve at least, is mostly gonna be out. And um, you know, so, it's not that big of a deal that it's a little undersized because normally I would say like this is about the minimum like the whole entire thing together is like the minimum size you would want for a toucan and that's assuming that you let it out you know a few hours a day but Maeve and Tupac are both pretty much out all the time all day every day but I want Beatrix and Maeve to eat and sleep together near each other and have some way where they can see each other constantly and interact to some minor extent through the plexiglass at least they can kind of like peck at each other and look at each other and that sort of thing they can't touch each other yet but i'm hoping that you know if everything goes well over time then we can start removing the plexiglass sheets and and see if they can uh, interact without possibly murdering each other <laughs> so i'm gonna go get Maeve and we're gonna just come in here and uh, we'll be back and then we'll see what happens, so. Oh, don't go up there. Come on. Yeah, I know. Go in here. Then you guys can look at each other. Okay. Let's watch what happens. But I apologize that the lighting is so poor, but um, I'll have to get, I'm going to have to get another light fixture for the other side of the cage. They're on a timer usually. So, um, I don't know. Let's just see what happens.
She's just kind of staying over there. May was immediately curious, of course. She's like, what happened to my cage? This will be nice too, because I can sit here in this chair that my computer's in here. But I can sit here on this chair and open the door and try to coax Beatrix out on her own so that she can learn to come out without my intervention. So she's really nervous right now, which is understandable, but. Maeve's just watching her. Are you guys gonna do anything? I guess not. Well, let me give them a little bit of time, and then if anything new develops, we'll be right back. <laughs> well, they found an exploit already. I forgot I left a small gap at the top. I didn't expect my perches to be up that high, but it still should be fine. I'm just gonna have to monitor them a lot, and um, you know, maybe it'd be good for them to have a little tiny spot where they can do that through, but we'll just have to see with time. This is all gonna have to be one of those things that we kind of just do by, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Play it by ear, so. Maybe you little stinker. What are you doing? Hey, Maeve. You better be nice to her. Well, it's been a, what, like an hour and a half or so now. Um, they've settled down pretty well. They're not really trying to attack each other anymore, at least not as much that I've seen. I've been sitting in here for a while. And I'll probably continue to sit in here for a while. Um, Maeve is a lot more uh, daring than I thought she would be. Aren't you, a little one? But I was kind of afraid originally that Maeve would be too docile and that she might get hurt by Beatrix. But it seems like Maeve might be able to actually handle herself. Oh. Hey guys, come on. Okay, see, that's it's gotten a lot better. <clears throat> but, um, I, was, I accidentally left a gap up there. But I think it's going to be fine. The main thing is just, I didn't want them to be able to grab each other's feet or body or anything, wing, anything like that. Um, usually that's probably not going to be a problem, but I think it's going to be fine. Um... You know, maybe it'll be good for them to have a little gap there. They can actually touch each other through. But Beatrix has been a little more um, cautious than I expected her to be. I kind of expected her to just immediately go up to Maeve and try to attack her. But that hasn't been the case, thankfully. So they've been pretty good just kind of sitting, watching each other, eating, things like that. They both have food in there. Maeve's being pretty good now. She's not instigating any drama or trouble. And, uh, you know, Beatrix is going to have to 
get used to our new enclosure here, but it's a lot more spacious, that's for sure, which is good. Um, she'll get maybe she'll get a little more used to jumping up and down and flying between areas a little better than I mean she can't fly but they she can still like super hop which is like a toucan will jump and then kind of open their wings and it, they can clear you know like 10 to 20 feet you know in just one hop just by doing that so they're little jumpers but she's able to jump up and down and control her motor skills a little better I would say um, you know having more room is always a good thing so the more room the better but um, this is a good start I think I'm, I'm feeling a little more positive lately um, I filmed two videos actually at the same time here I can open this up I've actually been filming two videos at once lately um, one is kind of Beatrix just being out for the first time, um, out and about in the house, which I've been working on, and then concurrently to that, I've been working on this enclosure area, and then, you know, uh, having a first meeting between all the birds, so. But, uh, I'm feeling a little more positive. I was kind of really getting worried for a while. I was like, come here, quit jumping down. I was kind of worried that she was going to be too wild to live in a house, but I think she's on the edge to where we can, you know, still work with her and get her into a situation where she'll behave more like Maeve and more like a friendly toucan, so. But it'll take time, obviously, and this video is probably going to be really disjointed too, so I apologize in advance. Uh, I've just been kind of filming clips as they've been happening. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to edit it together, but we'll see. So, uh... I have all three birds out. This is a disaster waiting to happen. Two. Three. Oh, crap. <laughs> Sorry, Maeve. Don't you mess with her. Ah, hey. Maeve, you leave her alone. She's our friend. You made her poop, good job. So it's been like a week that they've been roomies. Ooh, come on, guys. Actually, Beatrix is being good. It's Maeve's being a little ornery girl. Yeah, that's what you get. I'm just trying this out, just to... You see what you did? You scared her. Don't do that. <laughs> That's her food, you little shit. 